Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. You see I'm um, getting old. <laughs> Well, there are three things I'd like to talk about this morning. Church politics. That's number one. Number two, hate speech and increased violence in Zambia. And number three, I'll make reference to President, President Tayari's um, PF grievance hotline. Um, that's pretty much what his platform is. Let me start with number one. We are noticing over time that the church is becoming increasingly involved in Zambian politics. Example, the Catholic Church is increasingly involved in Zambian politics, but even other churches. I tend to believe in the separation of church and state because I believe that when you mix church and state, it has a great capacity to create division and chaos in the country. I think that the politics deal with the natural environment here on earth and religion should be at a higher level dealing with the supernatural. The state, meaning the government, must be focused on people's welfare and well-being and making sure that people have the essentials and they have the safety and the essentials, food, water, electricity, a good life and so on and so forth. The church should be focused on making us better people, better citizens. We have so many broken people in our country and everybody, every individual goes through pain in their lives. And we have a lot of questions as we try to navigate through life. So the church has a very important role to play in mentoring the citizenry and guiding the citizenry how to get through life. Uh, it is in this spirit, spirit that I feel that the church must always, must always aspire to be of a neutral posture than getting involved in divisive politics, dividing people. The church is not supposed to divide people. The church is supposed to unite people. The church is not supposed to pit one Zambian against another along partisan lines. The church should be open to all Zambians, regardless of party affiliation. So when I hear Catholic brothers or priests or however way we may call them standing on the pulpit and jumping into divisive politics they are doing a serious disservice to the people they are participating in the manipulation they are participating in the deception they are participating in the division that is not what the church is that's not the role of the church that's not the role of the church. Since when did Catholic priests start preaching politics on the pulpit? 
Since when? <laughs> That's not the role of the church elders to dive into divisive politics. And I'm not saying this just because they're in favor of this one or that one. It's a matter of principle. You know that we have so many problems in Zambia. There are people who come from broken homes. There are people with mental illnesses. There are people in jail. There are people who got out of jail and are trying to find their way back in life. There are people who are suffering from terminal illnesses. There's people who have lost parents. There are people who are going through a lot of pain in their lives every day. The church is supposed to spend their time, effort, energy, and resources healing people, not dividing people. What kind of a church is this? What kind of a church is this? This is very strange what I see in Zambia today. Since when did the priests start preaching politics on the pulpit? Since when? It's not healthy for the country. I discourage Zambians from tolerating that type of behavior. I think the Catholic Church must revisit their stance on this. We expect the church to speak on matters of social justice, speak on behalf of the poor, the bereaved, the ones who are being oppressed or overlooked. That's what the church should be doing. It should continue building schools and clinics and shaping up the way we think, the way our young people think so that they can grow into upright family men and women and good citizens and good neighbors. We have all these problems and despite all these social problems that we have in Zambia, we are now seeing the priests jumping into divisive politics. That's not good for the country. Look, <laughs> I was born in the Catholic Church, by the way. A lot of people don't know this because I've been critical of their political posturing lately. But I was actually born in the Catholic Church baptized in the catholic church my baptism name is nicholas i used to go Saint francis in makeni growing up and this is not the catholic church that i knew back then they have diverted and yes they have a long history of jumping into politics around the world but it is this meddling in politics that has caused certain wars around the world where people have died because of the church getting involved in divisive politics. You're dividing people. Don't. You're playing a dangerous game. You're playing a dangerous game. So I would advise the body, the Catholic Church, to desist from jumping into divisive politics. Because, like I said, the church should be operating at a higher level. Bring healing. Bring unity. Okay? That's, so that's the role of the church as far as I'm concerned. We can't be having fathers or pastors or preacher men standing on the pulpit and jumping into divisive politics. You're tainting the role that you are supposed to be playing in such a divided nation and you're strengthening tribal sentiments what a pity what a pity we need to reverse that trend i appeal to all meaning zambians not to listen to these fathers who are doing this because they really don't mean well you have a lot of youths whose souls need help whose lives are in danger, who have no guidance, no direction, maybe because they don't have parents, maybe because they come from broken homes. We have so many junkies. We have a lot of crime. We have a lot of young people committing crime. We have a lot of young people getting into prostitution and drug abuse. And despite all these problems, 
the church sees it fit to gravitate towards divisive politics. Wow. Wow. No, let's not go down that path. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. The second thing that I would like to talk about is, look, first of all, before I talk about this issue of hate speech and the uptick we have seen in violence against gay people, I know it's a very controversial topic. I know in Zambia it's not a popular topic. I know that in Zambia it's politically dangerous to uh, in any way uh, try to help people who are gay. Zambians, a lot of them just don't support it. I get that. But <clears throat> I'm operating from a higher principle. Just because someone is gay that doesn't mean, or that doesn't give anybody the right to commit violence against them. Um, I understand there's a lot of homophobia in Zambia. A lot of people hate gay people, I get that. But that doesn't give anybody the right to physically attack or attack in any way or even set them ablaze, set them on fire. You can't do that. You can't do that to a fellow human being. So we have to be careful when we talk about these things because it's very easy for us to create a climate of hate through the things that we say on social media and in our homes and out there in mainstream media. And if that atmosphere of hate is created, there are some people who are mentally unstable enough to attack and even kill uh, gay people. My natural instinct is always to side with the vulnerable group of people. So I'm just going to be honest with you on this one. It's not a question of whether I support it or I don't, whether I like it or not, this business of being gay, that's not the point. But the point is that if I feel that their lives are in danger and that people want to attack them, I would rather side with them than with their attackers. No Zambian has a right to attack any human being just because they are gay. That is not a reason to be violent. And God doesn't tell us that we should kill gay people or attack or harm or injure gay people. You, 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 you can't honestly tell me that yeah, it's a divine intervention to kill gay people. No, that's not true. We, we have, we may, there may be disagreement on this issue, but better to think it over and to debate and find solutions. But whatever the solutions are, there must be no violence against gay people. Nobody has a right to do that. You can't. You're, you're saying you're attacking or killing gay people in the name of your Christian faith. Wow. The Christian faith tells you thou shalt not kill. The Christian faith teaches you that love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. The Christian faith teaches us that we don't select. We have to love everybody, including the sinners. Even Jesus himself, when he came, he hung around with the prostitutes. They surrounded him. I mean, he didn't do anything with them that was immoral. But, hey, Jesus was a cool guy. He didn't say, no, your prostitutes stay away from me. No, your lepers stay away from me. That wasn't Jesus. Jesus hung around with everybody. The sinners, the tax collectors, you know, Pharisees would say, but why is he hanging around with these people? Well, hello. Jesus did not discriminate. That's why Jesus said, who is without sin cast the first stone. So who do we think we are? To use those impulses against gay people just because it's against our religion. 
when we are so full of all sorts of crimes ourselves. So my point here is, let us restrain ourselves from hate speech on this issue of gay people. We may think that it's benign, harmless. We may think that it's funny. We may crack jokes and speak angrily about them. But all that in totality is creating a very hateful atmosphere in Zambia, which is causing a lot of pain and grief towards gay people. They need the protection of the Zambian government. They are a minority in Zambia. And even if Zambia has its own set of principles and is a Christian nation, Zambia as a government, the Zambian government has a responsibility to protect every human being on Zambian soil, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their nationality, regardless of their religious beliefs or political affiliation. The Zambia that I envision myself is a Zambia where everybody who resides in Zambia gets to feel free and welcome and enjoy the Zambian experience. And like I said, there are a lot of disagreeable people amongst us. It's not, I mean, look at criminals. We've got rapists, we've got child molesters, we've got uh, junkies around us. They're all over. But somehow we must always find a way to coexist and find ways and means of loving one another. And just creating an atmosphere of love instead of uh, one where people who are mentally unstable are triggered to go and commit these crimes against gay people. And the other people have suffered in Africa as well. Albinos, for example, in certain countries have been targeted for some superstitious uh, reasons. When you see an albino being attacked, you have a responsibility to side with the albino and to defend the albino. When you see a gay person being attacked, you have a responsibility, if you can, to, put, to protect the gay person. It's not a question of whether you agree with them or you don't, whether you like them or you don't. It's a question of doing what's right, and it's a question of doing what's biblical and what is humane. So let's not be hypocrites. Let's not pretend that we are holier than thou. Let's just continue to find ways of loving one another and living together, okay? Somehow, through thinking, through debate, discussion, deliberation, we can find ways of coexisting. Nobody should be scared that in Zambia they will be killed or burnt alive. That's someone's child you're burning. Oh my goodness. Um, so f listen, like I said, for me, it's a question of humanity. Okay, I would never injure a gay person or hurt a gay person. I will uphold their dignity. Like I said, it doesn't matter whether I agree with them or I don't. But as long as they are human being, I will defend them from injury. If another Zambian wants to injure them or cause harm on them, if I'm in a position to defend them, I will. Because they are human beings and because none of us are perfect. So let's just stop being hypocritical here. Okay. Oh, the church doesn't like it. Well, the church has been molesting young boys and girls. Well, young boys. <laughs> Look, there's there's nobody who's... We have all sinned. Okay. That's my point. We have all sinned. I don't know what to tell you. You may not like what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is what I believe. And as long as that's what I believe, it's what I'm saying. And I stand by that. The third and final thing that I'd like to talk about, obviously, is the political nature. President Tayari's PF grievance hotline. But why am I talking about President Tayari? Well, because he's big. Uh, obviously, he draws an audience, a big crowd, and he's having a lot of influence. But I think some of the things he says has to be counteracted. It cannot go unanswered. Uh, what is this business, for example, 
of dragging the president's daughter who just recently got married talking about the marriage dragging it into the pol political arena i mean is that a decent thing to do i don't think so if you want to challenge the president challenge the president but why do you have to drag the family into this i think that's inappropriate uh, the the reason i'm mentioning president Tayari in particular is it's a reflection of the standard of politicking that has befallen zambia in terms of opposition politics i mean if we're going to practice opposition politics and i do that myself i identify myself as an opposition figure even though i'm not uh, in any party and the reason i do that is because i like the idea of providing checks and balances and being fair i don't want to be a pressing or a bootlicker we have too much of that in zambia everybody gravitates to the party in power i would rather be in the middle and offer checks and balances uh, so i consider myself as uh, an opposition figure but we have to be fair and this is what i've been talking about the last few days what has the president's uh, family the daughter and the son-in-law got to do with the, the the livelihood of zambians how does that solve zambia's problems if we drag that wedding into the political arena that's those are not the politics that we must cultivate in zambia i would rather we spend a lot of time debating and deliberating and discussing the issues policy issues because policy issues are what can help us make lives better for zambians i don't agree with for example with that uh, is it catholic father who said that uh, uh, people are not interested in policies they, they're just interested in eating the shima and whatever look that may be the case because people are not not everybody is educated not everybody is knowledgeable but excuse me but i'll tell you this you can't just dismiss that policies are important so what that preacher man said was dow we need policies we need to debate deliberate on policies we need to encourage that including people who are not knowledgeable we have to find a way of disseminating policy issues to them so that they understand it it is the pf i'm not going to answer the phone call let me finish my um video presentation the 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 the, P, the pf um the the, the pf are using President Tari and it's a PF grievance hotline. That's why I call it the PF grievance hotline because they are using President Tayari to speak on behalf of PF. And these are people who are suffering because PF lost the election, so they find comfort and solace. They find comfort and solace in what he says even if it's insulting to the president. But again, those are not the type of politics. Let's just talk politics. Let's debate politics. And then Zambia will improve. But if we continue being childish and senseless and insulting every day, we'll get nowhere. Let me end here. I'll talk to you later. I have business to take care of. Thank you. Uh, oh, by the way, by the way, um, I am not here to aggravate anyone or upset anyone. And I must say that just because I mentioned President Ali's name, it's not a sign of disrespect to him. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone. I think I must make that clear. I'm just simply trying to stress a point that if we're going to register development in Zambia, we have to change our type of politicking. I think that's the part I really must make clear. The opposition politicking right now is inadequate and the players leave much to be desired. I can't think of anyone in the opposition right now who would be a good replacement for President Aga Indekirimu. 
I can't think of anyone. It's the same old faces, the same old games. And is that what you want? <laughs> Maybe that's what you want. Okay. Remember, there was a lot of violence under PF. But when President Tali is talking, it's as though the violence is today. There's no violence today. I mean, you're not seeing people bleeding from being from cuts by being hit with a panga on the head. It's not the UPND that uh, raised the debt to crazy levels that we can't pay. It's not the UPND government that defaulted on their loans. It was the PF government. And President Haka Indikrima is not a dictator. I think you all should know what a dictator is. I don't need to explain that to you. You should know what a dictator is. President Haka Indi is not a is not perfect. But we're enjoying a lot of freedom of expressions right now, aren't we? Including he himself, Mr. Tari. He's enjoying his freedom of expressions. Yeah, he goes too far. But he's enjoying his freedom of expressions. President Haka Indigrima is not a dictator. It's not that I'm taking sides. He's not a dictator. Let me take care of business. I'll catch you later. God bless you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.